Hey everybody, Lewis here from Lifehouse Hiroshima and welcome to our Wednesday night teaching series. We are so glad to have you joining us tonight with people from all across our church. This month we're doing sessions from our Lifehouse College, so get ready to lean in, take some notes and hear from God. Also, if you're interested in Lifehouse College, go ahead to mylifehouse.com slash college to sign up. Let's get ready for some great teaching from Pastor Rod here we go! Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my study on Matthew 24 and 25 on the end times. Now, this is a season of coronavirus, the pandemic around the world, and but I want to talk to you about the lessons we can learn from Jesus' teaching in Matthew 24 and 25. Who would like to hear about what Jesus says about the end times? Well, today's part, part two, uh, I've called the, the big lessons or the final lessons that Jesus teaches us about these moments in history. Um, this should probably be at the end of my series, but I want to bring it way up front so that we, we believers and also people who maybe don't know Jesus but are seeking would know what are the big lessons for, for believers and for non-believers from Jesus' teaching. The one who could teach us most about the big issues of life, heaven and hell, the end times, the end of, end of time as we know it. And so I want to talk to you and we're going to go straight into Matthew 24 and 25, the big lessons. Now, the first part are going to be lessons for believers in Jesus. Those of us who are believers, we love Jesus, we believe in the resurrection, we believe in what Jesus has done. He's changed our heart, given us a new life. Come on. Amen. So for believers, I've got um, four main points from Jesus' teaching. Are you ready? We're going to go straight in. The first point for believers from the end times teaching of Jesus is watch and learn. Watch and learn. Be a watcher, an observer, 
and a learner. And we're going to read here from Matthew 24, verse 32. And Jesus says, Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. And Jesus says a few times, uh, you know how to watch the weather, but you need to know how to watch the weather of, of time, the weather of humanity, the earth, history. We need to be learners and watchers of the world and uh, learn a lesson from the fig tree. He also said in uh, verse uh, 42, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. What Jesus is saying is that we will never know the time. We will never know the day or the hour, but we must understand the seasons, the seasons of life. And I think over the last few hundred years, there's been some seasons where the believers have said, is this it? Is this the end times? One of those would have been uh, 70 years ago in World War II, uh, the Nazis uh, almost overtaking all of Europe and uh, and other parts of the world. Uh, terrible, terrible time. And people said at that time, is this the end time? Is the is Hitler, is he actually the Antichrist? So we would say, well, what's the difference between that time and this time? My answer is this is just bigger. It's, it's, it's a bigger place. There's more governments. Every country of the world right now is more involved. So when we're watching and learning from history, we would say that was a terrible time and it could have been the end of days, but it wasn't. And here we have 70 years later, this pandemic, which makes believers say, is this it? Is this the end of time? My answer is probably not. But Jesus would say to us, watch and learn, watch and learn. And I, I think as believers, we have to be people that watch the news, not not those news programs that's just people's opinions and panels from all sorts of different people and people arguing. No, no, we need to watch a news program that, that watches news, that declares the news without comment. It's getting harder to find those new cha news channels. And uh, I have a few thoughts on that, but I think we need to find a news channel without an opinion that we as believers can see that's the news um, and we need to go to the Bible or go to what God would say and uh, and we will be people that watch and learn. I think it's very important that we understand um, uh, the, 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 the central role of Israel in world history. Um, it's a big part of this Bible talks about learn the lesson from the fig tree. The fig tree is talking about Israel. And one of our studies, not today, but a future study will be all about Israel as God's time clock in the world. It's very interesting. Today, I'm not going to do that except to say um, 70 years ago in World War II, it, it looked like the end times, except uh, Israel was not yet a nation. Today, it is a nation. And so that's a that's a time clock change. That's a watch the fig tree change. It's watch the news, watch world events. Today, uh, we're obviously closer to the end times. And I would say to you, uh, watch and learn. Watch and learn. Be a world watcher and realize what God is doing in the world. The gospel's spreading and the believers are praying and uh, uh, there's more believers than there's ever been before. Uh, in the history of the world, alive right now, um, more believers, more people receiving Jesus every day. And with the online church and the online campuses, I believe the gospel is going to go to more countries than ever before. For example, uh, there are some countries of the world where you cannot preach the good news or speak the good news of Jesus without dying. There are some countries where if I go there and speak about Jesus, I could be killed. Or if I share the gospel and people respond, they could be killed. But today, because of the online experience, many, 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 many more millions of people are hearing the gospel online. Isn't that amazing? So watch and learn that God is doing a new thing. Watch and learn that God is moving in new nations and new continents. For example, uh, when I was a young man, I, 
I was 20 years old. I went to the Philippines for the first time. I love the Philippines. I've got many of my stories from that great nation. We love you, Filipinos. You are amazing. And um, But when I first went there, people were not that open to hear about uh, the concept of having a relationship with Jesus, even though it is a, a Catholic country. Uh, there's this Christian background, but people didn't know they could have a personal relationship with Jesus. That was That's 40 years ago, 40 years ago when I first went to the Philippines. Now, when I go to the Philippines, there's um, so many amazing churches. I think about 25% of the country have become firm believers in Jesus and uh, some are Catholic and some are, uh, many are not. Uh, but uh, w- w- from both those groups, people have become believers in a relationship with Jesus Christ in one generation in 40 years. I've, I've watched and I've learned how God has changed a nation. Um, being from Australia, um, there's been many, many wonderful churches started in the last 40 years. And I've watched our nation in Australia, be many, many exciting churches growing, um, many people receiving Jesus. Here in Japan, we've been here 18 years and um, still the statistic is very similar when we came. Uh, very, very few uh, believers, especially young believers, very few. Uh, but our Lifehouse churches, we've seen thousands of Japanese get uh, a faith in Jesus and, and be baptized. And it's been the most exciting time to be part of the church in Japan. It's not the end, it's still the beginning but we've seen many exciting things happen. There are other nations that God is moving in today. He wasn't moving in before uh, so greatly, but now he is. And countries like Vietnam and uh, um, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. Indonesia is amazing what God is doing. Many South American nations, many African nations. So what I'm saying is if we are a believer in the end times, we need to watch and learn what God is doing in nations. And I would encourage you to be a prayer with me and obviously with God that that God would move in new nations through the internet, through online church, through physical church, that we are part of a a generation of believers who watch and learn. and, And when we're committed to watching and learning about the many things that God is doing. That's point number one. Point number two is there's a principle of the birth pains. I'm going to read to you the scriptures in a minute, um, but we need to understand that there is a change happening in the world and and God is, is talking about increased contractions, like a woman in labor where she first goes into labor and, and the contractions are this far apart. And then after a while, they're this far apart baby's coming and then this far apart and then they're almost upon us the the biggest and most painful contractions before boom the baby comes that's what it's going to be like in the end times and i think the principle is this that the closer we get to the coming of jesus the pains of the world the birth contractions are going to get bigger are going to get more intense and they're going to get closer Together, I'm going to talk more about that in a in a week to come. But um, let, let me let me say that God is moving closer to the end times. Um, there will be birth pains or birth contractions. So uh, let me let me read that to you in Matthew chapter 24. Um, it's in verse eight. He says, um, well, "We're going to read before that um, in verse six. These are birth contractions. Let me read verse 8. But all these are only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. So when Jesus spoke this 2,000 years ago, there were all these things that we're going to read, but there's going to be an increase in intensity, in, in, in volume, and in time contractions. So let me read it to you. And you'll. this is in Matthew 24, 6. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation. That's ethnic fights and country against country. 
and there'll be kingdom against kingdom. So um, whole realms, whole groups of countries against groups of countries. That's like World War I and World War II uh, was like that. And there'll be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. And in Luke chapter 21, it also says there'll be sickness or disease like this pandemic in many parts of the world. And uh, so Jesus is saying these things have always been. And some people will say, well, haven't these things always been? The answer is yes, but there is an increase in, in, in the severity, in the intensity, the effect and in the time frame coming together. For example, um, even in the last 20 years in the world have been the two biggest recorded earthquakes. One was in uh, Aceh, Indonesia, where uh, something terrible, I think 200,000 to 300,000 people died. Uh, A whole coastland was wiped out. And here in Japan in 2011, I still remember it's the 11th of March, 2011. I still remember it like it was yesterday, this massive earthquake we had in Tokyo, and yet in Tokyo was only a seven. Up in Sendai was a 9.2 or something like that, the second biggest recorded earthquake. I remember that, living through that time. And then there was something like 10,000 aftershocks living in a shaking world. And out of that came, well, there was uh, the earthquake and then a tsunami where 20,000 Japanese people died. Um, And then there was a nuclear explosion in Fukushima, which still is a scar in Japan. There's there's still problems in Japan because of that nuclear explosion. They can't turn, you can't turn off nuclear um, uh, sites easily. There's such high temperatures, it takes years to to slow down um, a nuclear reactor. And so in Fukushima after uh, nine years here, um, there's still big problems. It's a 35 year solution they're working on. And after almost 10 years, there's been almost no uh, development. It's it's a scar in the earth, like Chernobyl is a scar in the country of Ukraine um, from many, many, many years ago. Uh, Chernobyl uh, is a well-known word, Um, but these things are gonna come more and more and and affect the world more and more. uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to trying to scare you, but Jesus said, be warned, these are like birth contractions getting more. And so there's a principle of birth contraction. The principle is, as time goes by, there's going to be more, there's going to be more severe, more influence, and more often these things are happening. And again, in the, the, uh, the Gospel of Luke, Verse 20, in chapter 21, it says also there's going to be more big ocean storms, typhoons. These are happening. They always happen, but they're happening more, more often, more, more impact. And uh, this is this is understanding what Jesus said. We need to understand that it's not the end yet, but it's it's moving towards the end. The principle of birth contractions. The third principle I want to speak about that Jesus said is don't be afraid. And you might say, well, it's very frightening. Earthquakes, pandemics, uh, big ocean storms, typhoons. Yes, it is. Wars, rumors of wars. Absolutely. But that's why we've got to be believers in Jesus. And I think that um, by being a believer, it doesn't make the world all better. It doesn't make all the things go away, but it does in our hearts make us more peaceful and secure in a difficult time and a a difficult world. And um, I'm now 60 and I've seen war zones, uh, the impact of war zones and refugees. And I've worked in nations like that when I was young. Uh, I've worked in countries where there was an AIDS problem and epidemics. And uh, I've lived in countries where there was very big danger from soldiers that could just kill you um, at certain times. And I've been in situations where I felt afraid. Um, And I want you to know that that, that, that God was always with me. Um, I've been in nations where I've uh, been injured, uh, been spat upon, been scratched, um, been people ran after me to kill me with uh, um, a machete, uh, rab, rabies dogs chased after me. Uh, I've been in all sorts of things. And I want to say to you, um, younger believers, you've got to believe in the Lord. 
that God is our protection. Amen. God is our protection. So I want to I want to read these scriptures to you um, that that Jesus will said these things in in Matthew twenty four um, uh, verse six. I, I just read it before, but let me read it again um, to you. Uh, it says here, and you will hear uh, of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic, but don't be afraid, don't panic. Uh, as a believer, uh, we don't move to panic or fear or backing away. And I want to say to young people, you know, when I was young, I heard a lot of these things and um, I heard some Christians say things like, um, well, well, let's not get married or let's not uh, have children. We don't know if we want to bring children into this world or or even uh, we, let's not buy a home or, or or let's just, you know, and I don't, I don't think that is, that's not the godly response. And uh, as an older believer, I want to say, get married, have great children, buy homes, start businesses, uh, be, an, be a contributor to the world and to life in Jesus name. Don't be afraid. Don't let, don't let these things stop you from doing the great things that God wants you to do. Here's the key. Know that God is in control, right? Know that God is in control. You will hear all these things and you will see them on the the news, but, but don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. I'm going to talk about that in a future week also. These are the big lessons from, from, uh, Matthew 24 and 25. One of the big lessons is don't be afraid, believers. Have faith in God. And I love Psalm 91. We'll we'll talk about that in another week uh, where it talks about, you know, know that the angels of God around you. God is there. God is our refuge and our strength and our fortress. God is, let's be believers. And and, and the Bible also says God has not given us a spirit of fear in 2 Timothy uh, 1, 6 and 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of love and faith and, and a sound mind. Come on. We, we are not of those who are fearful people. We are not fearful people who back away. We are believing people who pray and encourage and love. Amen. That's what we do. And so the third big lesson for us out of chapter 24 and 25 is whatever happens, don't be afraid in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray at the end for that. And the last lesson for believers is be ready. Be ready for whatever happens. Um, don't don't be a, a believer that says, oh, I, I wasn't ready for his coming. I, I, I wasn't ready. Um, let, let, let me read to you from um, Matthew 24, uh, sorry, Matthew 24 uh, verse um, 44. Um, Here we go. We're going to read this. It says, um, you also must be ready at all times uh, for the son of man will come when you least expect it. So be ready. One of the big words in chapter 24, and then we come to chapter 25, which is all about a a few parables, um, is the response of believers is to live ready, to live ready. I was taught as a young Christian Uh, We should live as though Jesus is coming today, but we should plan as though he's not coming for a long time. Live as though he's coming today, but plan, that's having families and children and homes and businesses and goals and dreams and plan that God is not coming for a long time, that Jesus is not coming for a long time, but live like he's coming today. Live with a hot heart. Live with a hot heart for God. God, I want to I want to be with you today. I'm going to have long-term plans, but my daily life is with you. And so we're going to come to chapter 25, and I'm going to read to you the parable of the 10 bridesmaids. All right? This is a very important parable for Christians in the end times. It's all about being ready. And if we're not ready, then we need to be warned. Be warned. Um, Is there a warning in this for Christians? Yes, be warned. We need to be ready. So are you ready? We're going to we're going to read here. Um, It's called the parable of the 10 bridesmaids. Some of your Bible might say parable of the 10 virgins. They were 10 virgin bridesmaids at the wedding. All right. They're they're there to cheer on the the bride and the groom. It says then at that time, at, at the time of the end, 
uh, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps, little oil lamps. The Israeli uh, people had little lamps that were handheld, uh, full of oil uh, with a wick, a single wick, and you lit it and it was light. They had 10 lamps uh, or they had uh, one lamp each and they went to meet the, the groom, the bridegroom, the man, the man. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Five were silly girls um, in this story. I'm not saying girls are silly, but these were sick. Five silly girls and five were five smart, clever, ready girls. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. So in this hand, uh, extra oil in this hand, the, the lamp. That's how they traveled. They were ready. They were ready for him to come today or ready for him not to come today. They they had the, the lamp burning and the reserve oil ready if it took a long time. That's the picture. Okay. They uh, When the bride's bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Is there a problem with that? No. Sleep well. Sleep well. Uh, eat well. Sleep well. Exercise well. Take care of yourself. Nothing wrong with going to sleep in this story. At midnight, which is, means the surprising moment, they were roused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. So it was a surprise. Uh, it was a surprise arrival at midnight. Um, Jesus is telling this story like it's going to come at a surprising time. Make sure you are ready. Verse seven, all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamp, got their lamps trimmed and ready to shine brightly. So a little bit of um, maybe a little knife around the wick to take away the black carbon. And then so it's going to shine brightly when they light their lamps. They got their lamps ready, all of them. Um, and the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. And let me tell you, folks, you can't get oil from other people. You can't get readiness from someone else. You've got to be ready and your oil's got to be ready and you've got to have a heart that's ready. You can't rely on someone else in a time of crisis. Come on, let's journal, let's pray, let's let's stay with God. God loves us, but he calls us to be ready. The others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. You can't share the oil. You can't share spiritual oil. You can't share spiritual life. You can encourage it. You can pray for it. But each person is responsible for their own heart. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. Yay! And the door was closed and locked. Oh, my goodness. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. Open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. Whoa, this is one of the big um, challenges in the New Testament with Jesus. Some people say Jesus is all love and he is. Um, but there's going to be a time in history where there's going to be those inside and those outside. Um, there's a lot of pictures of of uh, the end times and heaven and hell. Um a lot of pictures, a lot of stories, but the key thing in every one of those stories is those inside and those left outside. And friends, I don't want any of you to be left outside. I don't want to be left outside. I'm calling you to live lives with extra oil, live lives ready. And here's what Jesus said to close off his parable. So you too, Rod, and you too, watcher, you must keep watch for you don't know the hour or the time of my return. I want you to be aware of the lesson of this coronavirus. Um, I don't think Jesus is coming back, but he could. He could. He can do anything. He's God. But these times are meant to call the believers back to readiness, back to readiness. We're meant to watch and learn. We're meant to understand the principle of birth contractions. It's getting worse over time, but don't be afraid. God is in control. So keep ready. These are the four lessons for believers today. I've got two lessons for not yet believers, people who are not yet believers in Jesus. And you might say, well, we're all going to be believers watching this video. 
If that is true, let us learn how we need to share the gospel with other people. Because I've got two points from the coronavirus right now. Jesus would say to those who don't believe, he would say, please use this time to be forewarned of the coming the coming uh, climax of history. That from the biblical point of view, from our Bible, I'm reading my Bible on my iPad, uh, from our Bible, whether you've got a paper Bible or on your digital form, um, we need to know there's an end of history. Um, if you don't know that, you need to know that, that the Bible teaches there's, there's an end point where Jesus comes. It's called the end of time, the day of the Lord. And then we move into the next age, which is the age of God, God's age on the earth and the new heavens and the new earth. Um, at that time, there's going to be a separation. And, and so we need to tell people uh, who don't know Jesus, there will be an end of time. Some people might say, oh, you Christians, you believe in some wild end of time. And my answer is actually yes. Uh, Jesus does speak about this moment. That's why he says, be ready. So for people who are not yet believers, I, I would say to them, um, you need to know there's an end of time. Um, if this coronavirus is not the end of time, I don't think it is, then it's got to be a warning of those birth pains. It's a warning moment. It's the, the biggest warning moment we've had for 70 years since World War II or 100 years since the last pandemic uh, called the Spanish flu of uh, 1917 to 18, where hundreds of millions of people die. I hope that's not going to happen with the coronavirus. I pray it. I pray it doesn't. I pray God will extinguish it. But what I'm saying is, it's a warning to the to the non-believers or not yet believers that you need to be warned. This is this is probably not it. But one day there will be the it. The final. So let me read to you from Matthew 24, 33. It says, Even so, when you see all these things, you will know that it is near, right at the door. When these things coming, should they be a warning? The answer is yes. Warning to believers to get ready and a warning to non-believers to seek God, to seek God, to know that there's a warning. Is this a warning from God? Yes. Yes, it is. It's a warning for the whole world right now that we are mortal, we are not going to live forever, and our societies, although they might be great and we give thanks to all those doing amazing jobs uh, in the medical industry, thank you so much uh, to people of faith, praying, and to kind people. Uh, yes, there's going to be some good things in society, but it's a warning. It is a warning that, that, that one day, although this might not be it, one day will be it. Let me read it to you again. So even so, when you see all these things, what things? Wars and famines and big storms and, and pandemics and earthquakes. When you see these things, you will know that it, what is it? The coming of Jesus is near right at the door. Uh, so I think that we it gives us a chance to talk to people about this, this current age and our mortality that we need God in our lives right? That's my number one. And my last point really for even for not yet believers is there's still time. There is still time to examine the good news of Jesus. And that means for me as a believer, I've got time to tell people about the good news, my family and friends. And I've got time on online or face to face when we can meet face to face. Um, let me read to you the, one of the most exciting verses in Matthew 24, 25. It's Matthew 24, 14. It says, This gospel, this good news of the kingdom, will be preached in the whole world as a testimony or witness to all nations, and then the end will come. There's still time because I believe the gospel is still going out to these countries of the world where uh, we can now share online. We can now share. I can I can find someone in a certain country, and uh, I can share with them a, a video or a, um, a good news or a scripture. I can share with people all over the world, and you can too. I really encourage you to be a sharer of good news and good programming for people all around the world. So, if these are the lessons from chapter twenty four and twenty five. 
what should we do right now? Well, um, I am going to read one more scripture. I said I wasn't, but I will. This is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, chapter 21, verse 28. Let me say that again. Luke 21, 28. It says, when these things begin to happen, take heart and lift up your heads because your salvation or your redemption draws near. When you see these things, believers, come on, stand up. And and uh, one of the Bible's uh, version says, um, stand with confidence. God's word says, when we, these things begin to happen, stand with confidence. The time when you'll be set free is near. So when we believers see these things, we don't withdraw into a corner. And now we pray and, and we, we, we read the word and we, we get ready and we share good news with people. And uh, it says, stand up with confidence. It's talking about um, self-esteem in Jesus' name. We, we know the one who holds time. We know if we die, we're going to heaven. We don't have the fear of death, right? Yeah. Amen. It says, when you see these things, know your salvation. The word is redemption. This word is an unusual word. And Jesus speaks this word. He says, your, your, your um, freedom, your freedom is near. Your full transformation is near, says the Passion Bible. Your full transformation into what God wants you to be is close to you. Your, your redemption is is near. Now, what is this word redemption? It is a, a release from something by paying a price. Who paid the price? Is it Rod Plummer? No way. I paid zero. He paid 100%. 100%. Jesus. So redemption is Jesus coming near to us. Now, this word redemption also appears in Matthew 20, 28 and Mark 10, 45. Same scripture. It says, he, Jesus, gave his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life as a paying for freedom for many. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for my sin and your sin and my mistakes and your mistakes and my bad, my bad and your bad. All that stuff. It says he gave his life as a ransom for us. So where it says, hey, stand up because your ransom, your, your freedom, your deliverer, draws near. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. So as I finish, I've just got a couple of minutes. I want to say, come on, let's fight the fight of fight of the fight of faith. Okay. Finally got it out. The fight of faith. Come on, let's pray. Don't cease. Pray. Be a person who's ready. Let's pray for the amazing medical teams in our countries. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for people to have open hearts. Let's pray for this these this disease and others to go. Let's pray for God's word to go out. Let's be active in the world. Let, let's be people to cry out to God who be part of the world. There's a there's a prayer movement called the the 714 Unite 714. It's uh, based out of United States, but there's currently like thousands of churches from, I think, 120 countries, including us in Japan and others. Um, and it's saying maybe it's 7.14 in the morning or 7.14 at night. Let's pray together. If you forget to do that, just set a clock to some time. Pray, pray, pray for the world. Pray, pray for the world. Pray for people. Pray. Uh, and 7.14 comes from uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14. And it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Come on, let's pray right now. Jesus, we want to be ready. We want to be ready and we want to be praying. We want to be alert and watching. We want to know that this is a warning and we want to share with people. Help us to Lord to share good news. Share uh, from our uh, social media, share online, share person to person. But Lord, we're ready to stand up. No fear, no fear. We say no to fear. We say yes to Jesus, strength and power of the Holy Spirit in our heart. Lord, I pray everyone would learn the big lessons. The big lessons of this time is to step up and be ready. And Lord, you would touch many hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise if you feel to do that wherever you are. Give him a clap in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Well, God bless you. This is part two. We're getting just started about the end times teaching. Hope you enjoyed this. God bless you all. 
Hey, well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's teaching from Pastor Rod. Why don't you join me in prayer together right now? Dear God, thank you that you are the answer to a great future and eternal life. Help us, Jesus, to stay focused on you and the amazing, eternal, great purposes that you have for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. And hey, maybe you're there and you don't know Jesus in your life yet. Only Jesus can give us a new start and eternal life. So if you would like to believe in Jesus or come back to God right now, let's pray this prayer to invite Him into our lives together. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I'll follow you. Wow, congratulations. Hey, if you just made that decision, uh, please let us know. You can either like the comment below or simply visit mylifehouse.com slash Jesus. We would love to get in contact with you and help you in your amazing next steps with Jesus. Well, thank you for joining us for Wednesday night teaching tonight. Hey, your giving makes a big difference. So let's continue to put God first in every season. You can look at all of our online lo- options to give at mylifehouse.com slash give. All right, guys. Well, we would love to see you on Sunday for our services or back here next week at Wednesday Night Teaching. You're amazing. Have a great one.